So moving on to the foreign case study, we're looking first at the emigration side. And this, this the fact patterns here are Peter is a resident domiciled and citizen of uh, Hong Kong, uh, married to Winnie and has a child, Jin, son, has various assets in Hong Kong, including a trust of investments and land. The fact pattern is that uh, Peter moves from Hong Kong to Malaysia and at the same time uh, creates a trading company with a trading subsidiary in Hong Kong. So trading company in Lab One, in this case, with a trading subsidiary in Hong Kong and holds uh, investment, an investment account in Singapore. Uh, other assets are acquired once taking up uh, residency in Malaysia, including a house and a, a depository account. So the questions that will be asked from an immigration standpoint is the process and requirements to establish a Lab One business, uh, the director residency requirements, tax implications of setting up in Lab One, and then the Malaysia residency rights that flow from establishing a presence in Lab One. And I would invite Farah to just take us through uh, first the process and requirements to establish a Lab One trading entity. Thanks, Zach, and hi everyone. Nice to see everyone here today. Um, it's really quite simple. Setting up a business in Love One, what you need to do is go to one of our 60 trust companies, um, submit the requirements. It should be done within a week. Uh, there are different thresholds for incorporation, obviously, and the statutory fees. But all in all, uh, based on experience and depending on, uh, on the type of service provider, um, that you engage, it can cost anything between two to three, four thousand US dollars uh, to set up a Lab One company. Yeah, um, it will take about a week uh, or so. You can fast track it if you want. There is a fast track requirement, um, a fee for it, but that's very minimal. Um, and really, what that gives you is the ability to have a Lab One uh, company in order to run your business out of. Um, these trust companies or the company secretaries that we have in Lab One, uh, they have offices in KL, they have offices in Kuala Lumpur, they have offices in uh, Singapore, offices in Hong Kong, um, and I'm sure they've got referral partners around the globe. So if you are interested in a Lab One company, you either, if, if they don't offer it automatically on the menu, you may ask for it, and they will have referrals, uh, referral partners in order to offer that to you. Uh, there are no director residence requirements. It's not mandatory to have a domestic um, a domestic director. Um, and uh, so you could be 100% foreign. It doesn't have to be a Malaysian. Uh, any Malaysian directors are not in required, okay? Uh, the tax implications have become a little bit more complicated uh, in the sense that the 3% tax is now uh, applicable. Um, and there are substance requirements that are now required. So you, you need to employ two full-time employees, um, paying them the minimum wage, the min minimum Malaysian wage, which is about 300, 350 US dollars, um, depending on the level. Um, and you need to have a domestic spend of 50,000 ringgit, right? Um, for Malaysian residents right now, this is when it gets a little bit more interesting. If you needed, if you had one of these companies and they uh, conduct, and this company actually conducts services, uh, trading in services, you are then able to um, get residence rights in Malaysia. The original uh, immigration allowance will be for Lab One, but that can be extended to any place in Malaysia, and that also includes spouses and dependents. Um, so, in a way, the Lab One company not only gives you that tax neutrality. It can, for the right, uh, for the for the right kind of companies, also offer residency. Fair, just on the um, the substance, because this is obviously a, the the big all the rage nowadays. Yeah. Um, what's actually required in Lab One itself? Because we we've got this requirement to employ um, at least a minimum of two um, individuals in Lab One. But what about the the offices and the premises, et cetera. What, what needs to be shown on that, if anything? So it can be outsourced. Well, I know for a fact that a lot of the Lab One uh, corporate service providers are at the moment offering um, offices, shared offices in that sense. Um, so you can have 
uh, uh, an office. The, at the end of the day, it is about the domestic spend. It is about having two full-time employees um, in lab one, uh, one of which uh, has to be a managerial capacity. Um, and, and that really is the requirement. I mean, I think what's worth noting, aside from just this immigration issue or the, the, the limiting, uh, the, 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 the circumstances surrounding the case we're discussing at the minute, is the fact that the Lab One um, substance approach is fundamentally different from other jurisdictions. So we've been very prescriptive in that sense. Prescriptive in this sense, it, it's a word that is negative, but not necessarily in this instance, because there is um, certainty. There is no uh, reference to adequacy necessarily in the way we have approached it. So there is a laundry list of structures um, and, uh, and solutions. And for that uh, laundry list, you have corresponding uh, requirements for full-time employees and domestic spend. And just to remind everyone here that the domestic spend includes everything from the amount you pay your secretaries, um, your, you know, the amount that you spend for board meetings, uh, the regulatory fees that you pay. So anything outgoing from the Labon entity is deemed a domestic spend. Right. And insofar as in, in our fact pattern, we've got Peter, and presumably he's going to be a director of the Lab One company. Does Peter actually have to hold his board meetings in Lab One itself? Or, or is, there, is there a requirement that um, it's, it's seen as a sort of, uh, sort of mind and management occurs in Lab One? Do they 